All right, space fans, here's another Buchla patch for you. This one's kind of fun. It started with the pendulum ratchet and the source of uncertainty. And then after moving it around a lot, what I found was that there's some interesting bones that make this work. So we're going to start off with, um, with uh, something really simple, and that is... It's just an oscillator, and uh, all that's happening right now is a whole lot of nothing. The ratchet is stopped, so it's not changing the note, and it's also obviously not firing the the, um, uh, the uh, dynamics manager because there's uh, there's no pulse. But that's that's one piece of the puzzle. And what we're modulating there is the timbre and the symmetry of a 261. The other piece of the puzzle. is a Mark Verbos harmonic oscillator. And here, what we're modulating is the center and the width of the harmonic sweep. And so, again, ratchet's not running, nothing's happening, pretty dull. But let us now actually get that, let's get that ratchet going. So now, what the ratchet is doing is it's um, changing notes occasionally, and it's giving us a pulse. And you can sort of feel that it's got a little bit of a, a blues vibe going on. We are taking a lot of liberties with the blues scale. This thing is not tuned very much. It's, it's sort of tuned to uh, interesting dissonance, which we'll play with a little bit later. But you can feel that blues feeling. Okay. Now, the blues is actually half of what we're interested in right now. What we've got going on here is, uh, in addition to the ratchet um, we, and the sources of uncertainty, of course, what we've also got is we've got these voltage selectors. And what we're going to do with these voltage selectors, you may notice that one thing that I've done is I've got uh, my focus here, my goodness. There we go. I've got these guys hard over to the right, which means we're just listening to the quote unquote boring side. What the boring side is, is it's taking some interpretation of quantized voltages that are sort of supposedly playing octaves and fifths, but like I told you, I've detuned it in a way that makes it sort of fit into a bluesy scale as you go octave, fifth, octave, fifth. It's kind of, kind of playing around with that. So now, instead of listening to just that side, let's listen to the other side, which is uh, where things could be more chromatic. Actually, before I do that, before I do that, I need to uh, show you something else. And that involves going back to the ratchet. We've got two things going on here with the ratchet. One is... We've got a certain amount of note density that we can play with. And right now... <laughs> right now, it's not firing off a whole lot of notes. And that's okay. It's just um, not a lot of note density. Now what I could do is I can also I can throw in that little, that's my syncopator. There's 
with my steadier hand. Okay, so there's the principal rhythm. Now what I've done is I've cranked up the rate at which we're going to change notes. And what you can hear, now we're moving through these notes a lot faster instead of moving through like every eight beats, every note is coming up slightly different. We'll play with that in a minute. Bring up the syncopation. But again, we're in a very, very narrow range of notes. So now, I'm going to change that. Okay, so what we've done now is uh, we've allowed ourselves to select from a set of chromatically random notes that come out of our source of uncertainty. And what's happening is now our selector is able to choose whether we're going to listen to the left side or the right side. So whether we're listening to the more random voltages or whether we're listening to the more bluesy basis. Now another thing that we've got going on is that we can use that same thing that's driving our selectors to drive whether we listen to the more syncopated notes or listen to the more um, steady notes. And let me also draw your attention over to the far side here. We've also got an opportunity to make it so that our organ can also fly with uh, everything else. So now it's moving around. It calls for random. Everybody randomizes. Okay. And now what we can do ratchet. Now I've got a couple of games I can play. Remember I've got this uh, source of uncertainty up top and what the source of uncertainty is letting me do, I've got uh, quantized random voltages that basically are switching between heads and tails. There's only two states and, uh, and when it's tails low uh, it's going to select the left side. When it's uh, heads high it's going to select the right side. But what we can also do is we can make it choose whether to be more dense or to be less dense depending on uh, less dense with respect to rhythm and also less dense with respect to our note selections. And what's kind of groovy there is uh, we can make it so that uh, by default we have low density but when it goes heads it goes high and the density increases. We can flip that, make that go high, drop that back. Now, when it goes high upstairs, it's going to go negative and it's going to pull back the density of the rhythmic side while it's still changing um, chromatically in the other direction. Or we can flip that. got um, the inverse of uh, what we just saw. And of course,
course, we can, uh, there's a fourth state in there. We can put them both in that funny direction. There we are now. Heads and tails are both being opposite, uh, being negatively interpreted as far as the density is concerned. And, of course, we can play the same game with uh, Tick and Talk as well. There we go. We've just turned Talk way down. But if we want, we can make it so that Talk goes uh, high instead of low. going its way. And we are pulling it back. And of course, we can flip that with the other four states. So really, we got eight different characters that we can make in terms of our interpretation of synchronization, syncopation, rhythm, chromaticity. And, uh, and then just for fun, We've got a little bit of a uh, color character here. Way, way over on the left, our little bass is uh, reinforcing our harmonic synthesizer. And we're just giving it a tasty little wave with uh, some extra reinforcement saturating through a 210. And also got a little rhythmic part. And what's going on here is uh, we're picking up a filter. Let me focus over on that. Here we go. Um, one of our filters is uh, following our, our uh, frequency here. And it's picking a random voltage that's actually different than the pitch. And so it's just taking a slightly different snapshot, giving it possibly complementary, possibly reinforcing color uh, to the original uh, sound. And then what we've also got is we've got this uh, secondary filter, which is over here. And this guy is basically generating our little t -t 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 -t. And what it's doing is uh, when, when we want some, we're going to raise up the frequency, we're going to raise up the amplitude, we're going to raise up the bandwidth, and that's what's going to give us that little extra clave kind of thing going on way up top. So when we add that all together, Tell me, does that sound a little like on the corner to you? It's kind of cool. And what's really cool, I think, is that amidst all that free jazz, amidst all that randomness, what is deep down underneath from time to time is that little blues thing going on that you heard at the beginning. It's got the fundamental bones of a blues improv 
but it's got all the free will of the mighty source of uncertainty, which I think is just cool as heck. thing happening underneath. All right. Have fun out there in the Buclidian universe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.